Here on the table, we have one of the cheapest X99 motherboards I have ever seen. Actually, it might be one of the cheapest motherboards I've seen brand new, period. And this is a Kiwi Yida. Uh, I, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but anyway. 35 USD delivered to your door, or in, if you're in Australia, which is the price I paid, 55 Aussie dollars. Now, in the box, it's a small box, and you just get a micro ATX sized motherboard in a Looks like a wide aesthetic here and you get the bracket just to mount a basic cooler like we're going to mount here on this, the SE400, just with these clips here. So that's included and then you've got a SATA cable as well as your IO shield. Then you've got the motherboard right here, which comes in without a CMOS battery installed and it's got four RAM slots, but they do say in the ad that you need to uh, use the, I think it's the gray slots first. So it does apparently support quad channel memory and DDR4, but you have to use these two gray slots first. You're also looking at M.2 support here, which is pretty cool, as well as a USB 3 front out. So there's not a whole lot more I could ask for on a budget board this cheap. And the actual PCB they used doesn't feel all that flimsy. I mean, I've felt much cheaper PCBs in my life. The one thing that does really concern me about this board is this VRM. It looks like it's a budget six phase cheap VRM. So we're hoping that it does and is able to handle the three CPUs that we're gonna pair this with today because I just wanna find out if this is gonna be a good budget outfit. And for starters, we're gonna go with the i7-5820K, even just on default settings. If this is able to stay maybe under 90 degrees, I might be a bit hopeful here, then it's actually going to still be a decent option for the money. And then we're also gonna put in a classical Xeon, a E5-26, 50 v3 and then lastly if it manages to pass those tests we're going to put in the i7 5960x which this cpu by itself is just such good value i was picking these up in japan usd wise like 30 usd and then you couple that in with a 35 usd motherboard and then some budget ddr4 memory you can have a whole eight core gaming system for under 100 bucks which is pretty insane but hopefully this heat sink as well as this active cooling solution on this motherboard can do a decent job but let's find out. Let's start putting this thing to the test right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't want to spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. And for a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. So we now got our first test subject, the 5820K, on the table right here. And honestly, I'm pretty impressed with this motherboard so far, mainly because it knows its own limitations. Out of the box, it works with like, I just decided to test a Windows 11 Pro drive on it because apparently it's got TPM2 support and indeed it does. So Windows 11 will work fine with this motherboard in which it automatically detected that too and it changed its settings, booted up a couple of times and then we're in Windows 11. Now, the 5820K here, we've finished a Cinebench run, and we've also done a few stress tests on it just before, and the maximum this CPU got up to was 66 degrees with this ICE 400 SE. It's just a budget cooler off AliExpress, but the motherboard itself actually did okay in that the VRM temperatures, the most I saw here was 67 degrees, and that's because it's taking the CPU package power and it's maxing it out around 49 watts here with a Cinebench run. And then if we go to say like Unigine Heaven, I was running that with an RTX 2060, that was going to around a max of 57 degrees on the VRM. So really happy actually with this because I would rather have the motherboard just running at levels that it knows it's capable of. And so you're gonna get a long life out of it even though it's a cheap motherboard and you're still gonna get decent performance. I mean, the CPU is clocking up to max 3.3 gigahertz on these six cores, 12 threads, and the Cinebench multi-core score here is nothing to go crazy about and do jumping jacks over, but, but I'd much rather prefer this first scenario here than the VRM going to say 80 watts or something like that, and then smoking all the way up to 100 degrees. Those things do not last long in my experience. They, they go out pretty quickly. So I'm glad this kind of is conservative out of the box, but one problem we did come into was our memory sticks, the 3200 megahertz Samso tie sticks that I use. Now these are like a custom order that I do, and I believe they've only got one profile, and that's 3200 megahertz. So they didn't work in the board. However, some standard just silicon power 2667 megahertz memory, that worked fine as well as, mix, as, well as mismatching that with some Fury sticks 
to get a total of 32 gigabytes of RAM. So the quad channel actually works uh, fine in this board, but in terms of memory OC and trying to get a bit of extra speeds out of the memory, we're gonna go through the other two CPUs first because I'm very curious to see what the eight core will produce, the 5960X, as well as the Xeon. And then we'll also play some games, go through the BIOS and really give this motherboard a spin because so far it's looking really good. So we've now just finished the 5960X results here on a variety of different tests. And I'm actually really happy because things worked out okay. So we got the CPU on this ICE 400 SE going up to 76 degrees max, which is fine. And then the VRM itself went up to 73 degrees max and a total of 66 watts. And as you can see with the Cinebench score, it's not that bad. I mean, for a CPU on this whole inexpensive setup, the results, I guess, just match perfectly for one another. Cheap CPU, cheap CPU cooler, cheap motherboard, and everything's checking out here. Nothing's screaming in the danger zone right now. And then also when we we're testing it on Unigine Heaven, that was uh, scoring max 57 degrees on the VRM. And then it was going to 3.3 gigahertz as well, just like the 5820K. And ironically, the wattage was pretty similar there. But the max wattage we saw with this 5960X this time around was 66 watts. So the uh, VRM can handle a little bit of extra heat on it. And yeah, just actually pretty impressed. I came into this really sweating, thinking this wasn't gonna handle a uh, 5960X, at least I don't expect it to do what an enthusiast X99 motherboard would do, but at least it's doing pretty well in terms of giving you something that will work and hopefully not <laughs> die within a month. So let's uh, change over to the Xeon now and see what the go is there. This is a little bit weird. This uh, Xeon here, it's giving us out a weird beep error, which is even weirder than that is the mouse is like, initializing normally too so i'm going to try to remove a few ram sticks and yeah if this problem persists i'm going to try another xeon which we've got here a 2678v3 so let's just find out what's going on here so quickly changing the xeon over to the 2678v3 that is working absolutely fine now so the reason i decided to change the cpu first is because usually xeons especially back in the x99 days they were just like better i7s and better variants of the cpus that the desktop users would get so the fact that it just was giving out like weird problems when the two cpus prior worked fine means like to me it was most likely the cpu that had problems so Let's, uh, let's test out this final Xeon for you guys. And then also I'll quickly jump into say Fortnite and just see if we, we can get a decent experience out of this whole setup. So now we've just finished up the final amount of testing here with the Xeon and I'm pretty impressed with what I've seen. This is not as strenuous on the motherboard as the 5960X. So it took this E5 2678V3, which is a 12 core, took it up to around 60 watts max. And then this was about 2.8 gigahertz, all cores when it was being stressed. And if you were just doing say Unigine Heaven, it was actually running even lower wattage than the other two i7s and just hovering just under 30 watts most of the time. And this caused the VRMs to be the lowest of all the testing that we did here in use case scenarios. So <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this little motherboard will do the job just barely and it'll do it without trying to, I guess, um, destroy itself in the process. So <laughs> it's good to see, like, at least if you're buying a real budget board like this, you can couple it with a real budget cooler and take advantage of the budget end of X99 without having to try and find a enthusiast grade X99 board. Like with, for instance, we recently got a Tai Chi and that was a really rare find, but this thing being available all day, every day. And yeah, if you just find yourself say someone gives you a cheap x99 cpu and you want to utilize it you can take the take advantage of it actually with this little uh, board right here at least thus far so what we're going to do right now is just boot up a couple of games just test it out make sure the performance is smooth with an rtx 2060 then we'll go into the bios and uh, check that out too and see if there's anything that we can do to i guess tweak the performance especially when it comes to the memory and with all those tests out of the way, it's time for a conclusion with our Quiyida motherboard right here. And first of all, we 
tested it out in some games like Fortnite and I was just playing for a little bit and the performance was actually relatively smooth on 1080p low settings with an RTX 2060. Didn't really have any troubles getting up and getting a decent experience out of this budget combo. And ultimately, for my own selfish reasons, that's why I actually wanted to test this motherboard in today's video, because I wanted to know, okay, can I actually put this thing in a legitimate budget gaming PC and not have to stress too much about the PC coming back with problems from someone who gets it and then say it breaks down because I guarantee my gaming PCs, that's one thing I always do. And so if I'm basically selling the PC with bad parts, that I know I'm gonna fail, then that's only gonna waste me time and more money. And so this thing here actually, even though it's a budget motherboard at $35 USD, it's got its own proper safe limits in place to not take things to that extreme where it's then going to be a basically a self-destruction process. And so what I saw here was the limits were conservative, but it's conservative in a good way and that it's gonna protect the board. And these limits are essentially in place from the BIOS itself and there are hardware limit in the BIOS from what I saw. And so you can override them if you want and you can take the speeds a bit higher. It's just that this VRM's already got a little heat sink on it and a fan cooling it and it's already getting up to around 73 degrees as we saw with the 5960X. So for me personally, these are the levels that I would run it at anyway. So it's good to see that they've got the levels for the given hardware right out of the factory then what about some other things like the memory speed? Here's where I was able to tune this to about 2667 megahertz, get a bit more speed out of the memory. However, there is no XMP profile support there, at least from what I could see. So you have to manually enter your RAM timings to get a tune out of the RAM. So that's a little bit of a, a drawback there. That'd be one of the biggest things I'd critique about this motherboard. And also the onboard audio is okay. And I'm not going to go too harsh on the onboard audio on this budget motherboard because it's simply $35. But it did play sound okay. I'd personally recommend just, uh, it did sound a little harsh, but I'd personally recommend not going up too high with the volume level if you're going to use this motherboard with headphones or a headset or something like that. If you're going to use audio with this PC setup, I'd much rather use desktop speakers because it's going to, I guess, the distortion levels on this budget audio right here, it's not gonna hurt your ears as much via speakers as it is as opposed to headphones or a headset. Anyhow, when all is said and done, with this motherboard right here, it's got actually what feels like a decent build quality. M.2 support works out of the box, the four RAM dims works fine. Keep in mind though that the basic 3200 megahertz that I had, the Samso ties, they didn't work out of the box initially but I was able then to save in a memory profile 2667 and those RAM sticks did boot up after that, if you're wondering. So that worked absolutely fine after I did it. But then also coupled in with the budget ICE 400 SE cooler, this is going to be pretty much a budget combo that I'm going to be experimenting with and seeing how it goes on flips. And of course this motherboard being 35 bucks, it's not too bad and of course, Locally here, it's really rare to come across a decent X99 like a Taichi or something like that at a good price. And so the amount of X99 CPUs that I have here versus the amount of motherboards I have, it would be at least a 10 to 1 ratio. So I desperately need motherboards in order to build out budget PCs with X99. And so something like this looks like it does the job. And I'll put some links in the description below if you guys want to check out this motherboard or the cooler I used in today's video. And with that aside, hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.